In this video, we're going to be looking at count examples. And the best way to illustrate the concept of count examples is just look at example. We have the statement n squared plus n plus 1 is prime for all positive integers n. Uh, there's just a few words I want to check you understand first before we see whether this is true or not. Um, integers is just a posh way of saying whole numbers. Uh, and positive uh, always starts from 1. In, in, in America and in England, uh, positive always means 1 and above. So positive integers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., not including 0. Now, here's a key question. How many values of n would we need to try to show that the statement is true? And how many would we need to try to show that the statement is false? Now, to show that the statement is true, you might kind of consider trying a few examples. So the first uh, positive integer is 1. So let's try 1. So when n is 1, we've got 1 squared uh, plus 1 and plus 1 again. And that is equal to 3. And indeed, 3 is a prime number. So that matches. Uh, we might then try 2. So when n is 2, we've got 2 squared plus uh, 2 plus 1. And that's equal to 4, plus 2 plus 1 is 7. And indeed, that's prime again. And then we might try 3. We've got 3 squared plus 3 plus 1. That is 9 plus uh, 3 plus 1. And that gives us 13, which again is prime. We might, at this point, conclude, well, we've tried three examples and they're all prime. So, well, we've got enough evidence we can conclude that this is true. And that would be very unmathematical. You, you can't conclude that at all. Just because you've shown it's true for just a few cases, it's not enough to show it's true for all positive integers. How many examples do we need to try? Well, we, had, we would have to actually go up to infinity because there's infinitely many positive integers. So how, many, how would we need to show that the statement is true? We would have to try it for infinitely many numbers. And obviously, um, we can't show it's true for infinitely numbers by just trying every single case because we need infinitely many times. Now, how many values do we need to show that the statement is uh, false? Well, actually, if we do uh, one more, and we do 4 squared plus 4 plus 1, this time we get 16 plus 4 plus 1 is 21. And in fact, this is not prime, is it? 21 is divisible by 3 and 7. Clearly, that's not a prime number. And we can see that this statement can't be true then, because we're claiming it's true for all positive integers then, but we've actually shown there's a number for which um, we don't get a prime number. Uh, we can see when we try and is 4, we don't get a prime number, so this statement can't be true. So in fact, we only need one example to show that a statement is false, and this is known as a count example. So a count example is just an example which shows that a statement is false. So I'm going to give you a few examples of other statements, and let's find a counterexample for each of them. So we've got these three statements, all prime numbers are odd. Uh, statement 2, the square root of a number is always less than the original number. And the final one, 2n squared plus 11 is prime for all inches n. So let's come up with a counterexample for each. So the first one, we just need to find a prime number which is not odd. So that would be a count example. And we need to justify why it's a count example. So um, you might be able to think thought of two. So we've got two because two is prime, but not odd. And then we've justified it is a count example. Yep. Uh, what about the second one? We've got to find a number where the square root of the number um, is not less than the original number. Um, and you can actually think of any, any number you try between 0 and 1 will be a count example. So let's just try 1, for example. Uh, so if we do the square root of 1 is 1, but, and then we need to explain why it's a count example, 1 is not less than 1. You could have also had 0, the square root of 0 is 0, which is not less than 0, or even something like, well, the square root of a quarter is a half. And in fact, when you square rooted it, the number actually became bigger. And finally, we've got this third statement here. 2n squared plus 11 is prime for all integers n. Uh, now, we might try some initial examples like um, 
you might try 1, 1 squared times 2 is 2 plus 11 is 30. And that is prime, so that wouldn't be a count example uh, because it is prime. Um, but let's try uh, 11. Now you might intuitively realise that the 11 isn't, when you put it in, it's not going to be a prime. Because if you had 2 times 11 squared, well that's a multiple of 11. And when you add 11, that's still a multiple of 11. So you'd end up with something that's a multiple of 11, which won't be prime. But let's try it. When n is 11, then we get 2 times 11 squared plus 11. And that's going to be equal to 2 times 121 plus 11 which is 242 plus 11, which is equal to 253. And we need to justify why that is a count example, and we just need to say which is not prime. Or we could have said it's a, mul or we could have said it's a multiple of 11. Now the last piece of theory I want to consider are conditional statements. And what I mean by conditional statement is anyone that has the word if in it. So here's just an example. We've got this statement here. We've got if P is prime, then P plus two is prime. And let's consider when we would have found a count example to this statement. Now to have a count example, this condition here, the if bit, if P is prime, that has to be true in order for the statement to be even relevant in the first place. If that's not true, well then we, haven't, we can't find a count example because the statement's not even relevant. And this conclusion here, the bit after then, in order to have a count example, that needs to be false. So we need the condition to be true, and we need the conclusion to be false. Now let's consider three different examples here, and whether any of these are count examples. We've got 7, we've got 9, and 11. We're going to consider, is the condition true, and is the conclusion true? Now let's start with 9 first. Well, if P is prime, but if, is that number prime? No. So the condition doesn't hold, and therefore 9 is not a count example because it's not even relevant to this statement because we're only considering numbers that are prime. Uh, what about 11? 11 is prime, so the condition does hold. But if we add 2, so 11 plus 2 is 13, then 13 is prime, well, that does actually hold. So this is not a count example because it does actually support the statement. So that's not a count example. And this one here is not even relevant, the 9 we had before, not relevant. So the last example here, we got 7. Now, does the condition hold? Well, 7 is prime, so the condition holds. And does the conclusion hold? Um, well, 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 is not prime. So indeed, that does falsify the statement, because the statement's relevant, because the condition is true, but the conclusion doesn't follow, and therefore, this indeed is a counter example. Now let's give you one example of this um, as a test your understanding question uh, to see if you get this. Test your understanding. And the statement is this. If n is prime, then n squared plus 2 is prime. Yep. And you may want to stop the video briefly to see if you can come up with a count example to this. Now hopefully you've had some time to think, so we just need to find one example where uh, this is true, the condition has to be true for the statement to be relevant, but this is false, and then it will be a count example. So let's try uh, n is 2. Is that prime? Well, yes, it is. So the condition is true. So this statement is relevant. Then n squared plus 2 is prime. Well, if we do 2 squared plus 2, that's equal to 6, which is not prime, isn't it? So therefore, this is a count example. And we've got a successful count example. And there's many others uh, you could try. Well, if we tried um, n is 3, what happens here? Does that work? We've got 3 squared plus 2, which is 11. Well, that's not a count example. 
that is prime, so it's not a count example to this. Um, what about, uh, and we can't try n is four because then that won't be relevant, but if we try this, we get five squared plus two, which is uh, 27. And again, that one is not prime, so that's another count example. So these crosses are count examples, yeah? Yeah? of a final puzzle, I thought I'd give you this challenge. And in fact, this is from uh, the MAT, uh, the Maths Aptitude Test, which is actually the test that um, Oxford University and now Imperial University um, use for students who are applying to the universities. Um, so, we've got this problem here. The fact that 6 times 7 equals 42 is a count example to which the following statements. We've got statement A, this is multiple choice, the product of any two odd integers is odd. We've got B, if the product of two integers is not a multiple of four, then the integers are not consecutive. And we've got C, if the product of two integers is a multiple of four, then the integers are not consecutive. And finally, any even integer can be written as the product of two even integers. So let's look at each one of these in turn. Um, so let's look at the first statement. The product of any two odd integers is odd. So we've got this fact here. Now we've got six times seven is 42, but here we've got the product of two odd integers. But this is not the product of two integers. So in fact, um, this statement here, this example here is not even um, relevant. So this is irrelevant. Yeah? Because this only concerns when we have the product of two odd integers, and that's not. So it's not a count example. Um, it's just irrelevant. Right, let's consider C. If the product of two integers is a multiple of four, so remember, we require, we've got a conditional statement like this, we require the condition to be true, but the conclusion to be false, uh, if we have a count example. But the thing is, six times seven is 42, that's not a multiple of four. So again, it's irrelevant. Uh, what about D? Any even integer can be written as the product of uh, two even integers. Well, that's definitely um, not true in general. Um, but it's not an example of it, because it's saying any even integer, well, that is an even integer. It says can be written as the product of two even integers, but it's been written as a product of an even and an odd integer. So, um, again, it's not a count example there. Um, so that's not a count example. Uh, by, so by, by process of elimination, it must be B, but let's consider it. If the product of two integers is not a multiple of four, well, is the condition uh, true here? Well, indeed it is. Product of two integers, and it is indeed not a multiple of four. 42 is not a multiple of four, so the condition holds. And the con what's the conclusion? Then the integers are not consecutive. Um, but the integers are consecutive, aren't they? Um, they are consecutive, and therefore the condition is true, but the conclusion is false. So that indeed is a counterexample.